Earth. What if all the resources on Earth were directed towards building a megastructure in space? And why should we do that? To quench the insatiable thirst of humanity for conquest. After today's video, we will be one step closer to the complete dominion of the universe. Now what we need the most for our goal is power, or rather energy. But how much? Pretty close to unlimited. Surprisingly, even with today's technology, we can start a project that will give us our desired goal. But first we have to see, I mean borrow an idea from a man called Freeman Dyson. In 1960, Dyson theorized that an advanced civilization would eventually build structures around their star to capture a portion of its energy. The main idea was not about a solid sphere that would surround the sun as it's largely known, because this structure is simply not strong enough and it will collapse into the sun. What we're going to actually build is a swarm of satellites, which he called the Dyson Swarm. But before we can build such a mega structure around our sun, let's first understand how satellites work around Earth. First, the satellite is launched into orbit from a rocket. And then it stays into orbit and does not fall back to Earth. And why is that? Because the satellite is given a carefully calculated speed called orbital velocity that counters the Earth's gravitational pull. So as long as it has this speed, it will never fall back to Earth. And when it will slow down? Never. How is this possible? Because in the vacuum of space, there is no air resistance or friction to slow down the satellite. Then it should be easy to maintain a satellite, right? Actually not, because there is something called orbital decay meaning that over time the satellite will slow down because of influence from moon and sun gravity and influence from Earth's atmosphere. And how can we solve this? With thrusters that make little adjustments when needed. And now the question is, how far can we place a satellite without making it drift into space? We can answer this with something called the Hill Sphere. The Hill Sphere is the region around a planet where its gravitational influence dominates over other planets or sun. So for fun, let's find out if we can place a satellite 1 million kilometers from Earth. Using the Hill Sphere formula, the maximum distance is 1.18 million kilometers from Earth, which is okay. Using the orbital velocity formula, we find out that the satellite needs to be moving around 630 meters per second to not fall into Earth. Now that we are the true engineers of satellites, we can move on the next step. So what we need now is to build trillions upon trillions of satellites that would orbit the sun. Unfortunately, to achieve this, almost all of our planet has to be salvaged for resources. To solve this, we need to find a more disposable, I mean a more fitting planet. Mercury. Truly the best candidate because it's the closest to sun. And surprisingly not so hot as it should be. And why is that? Because Mercury has no atmosphere. For comparison, Venus is 1.6 times hotter than Mercury even if it's farther from Sun because it has an atmosphere. Now let's go to Mercury and start building. After our brave crew arrives on Mercury, we can't help it but wonder. Building so many satellites would take too much time for humans to build. So we're gonna use robots. Our valuable employees will have three jobs. Miners to extract the minerals, refineries to purify the minerals, and assembly lines to build the satellites and later on to expand our factory. And while this process can get a little dusty, Thank you. bless you, our robots can handle it. And lastly, to be very efficient, we need something called a railgun. This machine will help us shoot the satellite straight into the sun's orbit instead of using rockets that are much more expensive. So after our crew builds our starting base, what do we tell the robots to mine? Well, from Mercury we can mine and refine iron, titanium, aluminum, silicon, and more. So besides the advanced electronics that we will import from Earth, we have the bulk of our resources here. But we forgot our most important task. How do we design our satellite? I was thinking of something like this. A ball of solar panels that has two lasers on the opposite sides. Why did I choose this design? Because a spherical design can capture sunlight from multiple angles. 
ensuring that some part of the satellite is always exposed to the sun. Also, it is compact and robust, potentially reducing the risk of damage from space debris. And the lasers are there to transfer the energy from the sun back where we want it. And you may ask me now, why there are no thrusters? How are we supposed to negate the orbital decay? Well, orbital decay around the sun is much weaker, and our satellites can chill in the orbit for even millions of years. The last step in our plan is to find a good orbit for our satellites and the orbital velocity needed to stay in that orbit. To find the orbit, we're going to use the Hill Sphere of Mercury, which says that Mercury has a 222,000 km sphere of influence. So to be outside Mercury's influence and not so close to the Sun, we're going to choose a 300,000 km orbit from Mercury. And using the orbital velocity formula, we find that our satellite needs to be moving 47 kilometers per second in order to not fall into the sun. And here we go. Once in orbit, our satellites can collect solar energy for a very long time. We will still need to build larger stations that orbit the sun and collect the energy from the swarm. These stations will then transfer the energy with even more powerful lasers back to Mercury to expand the factory and later on to Earth. After this project, the energy of the sun is ours. And what's next? The universe.